composite primary key and also uh, we know about uh, foreign key right but still there are some things to be explained in foreign key we fully covered the primary key and composite primary key part but we need to have some practice uh, questions or practice sessions uh, in related to foreign key right so hope you remember in the last class i have shown you some tables and we have identified the primary key as well as composite key there but uh, we did not identify the foreign key uh, in those three tables right so let me show them again and identify the foreign key then i will explain some of the related things right so let's check them now okay so this is the one which uh, we discussed earlier at last right so we already identify the primary key of the book table right so hope you remember the book id is the primary key of the book table and also we identify the identify the primary key of publisher table what is it publish id is the primary key and when it comes to book publisher table uh, we don't have any single field as primary key because both book id and publish id may have duplicate values so look at the publish id here right so here publish id repeated but this book id doesn't have any duplication record here but i told you that it is possible for publishing a book it is possible to publish a book by two or more than two people right so book id can be repeated so if b001 is published by two people you know this will be definitely repeated b001 definitely be repeated okay right so here composite key or composite primary key book id plus publish id right so we discussed all these things right so <coughs> sorry now come to my question can you can you pick or can you tell me one foreign key from these tables tell me one foreign key anyone can you give me one foreign key unmute your microphone and answer give me one foreign book key id of the book. which one book id of the book publisher book, book id, ID of the book, book book id in which table book publisher table yes book publisher table look this is something uh, different than uh, the other table okay before i take this let's uh, let's go back and take the previous table so this is the one which which we discussed earlier look here this is student table right so here in this student table st number is the primary key in house table house id is the primary key so look here the house id is primary key in house table right but that is not the primary key in student table okay house id is the primary key in house table but the same field is they are in student table but they are it is not the primary key because primary key is student number so house id in student table is called foreign key right so we discussed earlier this is too easy to identify right but here look here in this question as you said book id right this is the one book id in book publisher table is one of the foreign keys this is correct but why try to understand the reason right book id is is a foreign key why the book id is the is the primary key of the book table right book id is the primary key of the book table but it is not the primary key in book publisher table what is the primary key in book publisher table what is the primary key in book publisher table there are no primary keys okay no primary key but Uh, you know composite primary key is almost similar to primary key right so even uh, right so if there is no primary key you can say that uh, it is book id and publish id right that composite primary key primary key almost same same but 
if if you are asked to write the primary key in an exam write the primary key only if you are asked to write the composite primary key write the composite primary key but for this kind of an explanation you can take composite primary key as primary key it is not not wrong right so what i am trying to say is in book table book id is the primary key but in book publisher table the primary key is both right composite primary key but assume that it is primary key both are primary key so is book id in book publisher table a primary key is book id in book publisher table a primary key no no but it is the primary key in book table right so in book table it is a primary key in book publisher table it is not the primary key because both of them don't think that book id is is a part of the primary key it can be the part but my question is alone right is book id alone the primary key in book publisher table no right so here book primary key is book id plus publish id alone book id is not the primary key so it is the primary key in book table not in book publisher table therefore book id in book publisher table is a primary key sorry is a foreign key have you got, got got that idea so now you can realize that this example is slightly different than the previous example in the previous example you don't have any composite primary key so when you don't have any composite primary key it's too easy to pick the foreign key but here there should be a confusion even still you may have some confusions so some of you might might have uh, i mean uh, thought that book id is is partially involved in in uh, composite primary key so you may think that book id is the primary key in book table and also book id is the primary key in book publisher table sometimes you may have such feeling but it is wrong because book id is a part of the primary key not alone so since it is not primary key alone it, it's not a primary key it can be called foreign key okay right can anyone uh, can anyone pick another foreign key in these three tables is there any other foreign key in the in in these tables tables yes. publish id of the publish id in book publish table yes so sometimes you may have more than one that is possible right so here we have a foreign key another foreign key look here again the same same explanation same idea look at the publisher table right in publisher table as we discussed earlier publish id is the primary key okay in publisher table publish id is the primary key but take a look at the pub, uh, sorry book publisher table in book publisher table publish id is there but as we discussed earlier in book publisher table publish id is not the primary key what is the primary key book id plus publish id there it's a composite primary key so publish id a primary key in book pub, sorry publisher table but that is not the primary key in book publisher table so therefore publish id in book publisher table is one of the foreign keys right so here you have two foreign keys book id in book publisher table is one of the foreign key and also publish id in book publisher table another foreign key okay so i hope you have understood but if you have doubt or if you have, if you need any clarification ask me right i can clarify any doubt right so take take one more question right so now see uh, a library keeps three tables for managing or for organizing its data right a library may have so many data to be saved so library keeps three different tables for having the data right so there is a table called book table there is another one called borrowing table uh, and then the last one student table because you know in a the library there are different types of data students data should be saved 
borrowing data should be saved and book, book data should be saved. So it uses three tables, right? Okay. So again, my questions are exactly same. So can you tell me a, a, a primary key in book table? What is the primary key of book table? Book ID. Book ID. Book ID. Book ID. Observe the data, study the data and tell me, right? You cannot, uh, I mean, uh, in a hurry, right? So you have to understand the data and think whether the B0, sorry, B1001 be repeated or not. So look at the, look at the fields uh, given in book table, book ID, book title, borrowed. You have only three data. So look at the first record, uh, B1001, book title is Oliver Twist and borrowed true, which means the, the book has been borrowed. Some one student has borrowed that. That's why it is true. So is it correct? What, what about your answer? Are you sure? Book ID? Yes, right? So book ID is correct. In book table, you know book, see this B0, sorry, B1001 never be repeated because that number is given to Oliver Twist. So remember, so this never be repeated. Okay, so book ID in book table is the primary key. I right, go to the student table. What's the primary key there? Student ID. Yes, ID. SID, right? Student SID. ID. Try, try to use the same name. Huh? So SID. Student, uh, even, even in exam, so suppose if, if they ask you to write the primary key of student table, you have to write as it is written in the, in the exam paper, like S. Look, there are underscore ID. There is an underscore so ID. You cannot write SID without underscore, right? Better even keep the case, capital symbol also best, right? For a best practice, for your safe, keep even the capital symbol, right? If they are given in capital, better write as capital in your exercise, sorry, in your exam paper. If the names, field names are given in simol letters, try writing in simol. It would be safe. Maybe capital simol is not big issue, but use those, uh, I mean, uh, symbols, right? Here, you cannot use any other symbols. Underscore can be, so use the underscore. Okay, SID is the primary key because every student is identified by a number, right? So that never be repeated, okay. Now go to the borrowing table. Check the borrowing table and tell me the primary key of the borrowing table. Book ID. Which one? Is it book ID? Primary key. Is a book is it book ID? Can we primary book key? ID as primary? There is no primary key. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, there is no primary key, but answer to my question. So what's wrong with book ID? Can you select book ID as primary key? Because it's unique, right? Sometime uh, in another day, same book will be yes. borrowed. Yes, a book can be borrowed. The same book, right, can be borrowed in different days. Look there, this B001, look at the first record, B0, sorry, B1001, which means Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist is borrowed by S003. He, who is it? Uh, Nias. So Nias borrowed Oliver Twist on 21-8-2014. Can another one, another person borrow the same book in another day? Is it possible? Yes, yes right? Yes. So when yes. someone borrows the book again, you know the date must be written. Ah, what has to be written here? The same book number, B1001, right? So B1001 repeated. This has to be another student, right? Even same student can be borrowed, can borrow another, another time, right? So book ID never be. But fortunately, right? But fortunately in here, uh, in this table, everything is unique. So that's why I, I, I keep, I mean, telling you, don't come to any conclusion by using these sample data. These are some sample data given. They seem to be unique, but it doesn't mean that the field is unique. Assume there may be hundreds of records to follow. 
right? Use your, I mean, knowledge, use your practical as, uh, ability and understand, right? That's why I used to call that as study, study the table, right? So this has to be uh, uh, duplicated, right? So even student ID can be, look here, even in the sample record, student ID repeated, S002 uh, written twice because one student, same student, borrowed two different books. This S002, which means Gita, borrowed B1003, Harry Potter on one day, and 1004, Tenali Raman uh, in another day, right? So it repeated. So what is the idea? So no, even date cannot be, right? Same name, same date, many books can be borrowed. So here, composite primary key. So tell me, what is the composite primary key here? Book ID plus Book SID. ID and student ID. ID. Book ID plus SID. SID. Is it correct, others? Is it correct? You can discuss, right? You, I have given the freedom. Discuss. Book ID, SID. Is it correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look, yes. I already explained the way to check whether the data is repeated or not. You all think in, in the same way, right? Your brains are working in the same, same way. Look. Look at the first data. Now you are trying to say that book ID, SID, right? These are composite primary key. So now your first data is this one. B1001 S003. This is your first data. Will it be repeated again, right? Will this same data be repeated again? B1001, right? S003. Will it be repeated again? If it is repeated, then you can't say that it is a composite primary key. Answer me, answer to me. Is, is it repeated? Can it be repeated? Yes. Yes. yes How? Yes, See, the same student, uh, that particular student, which means who is it? S003. Nias can borrow the Oliver Twist. Huh? In another day. Yes, another day. Right? So on 21st 8th, 2014, Nias borrowed uh, Oliver Twist. Maybe after, after some time, maybe in the next week, he can borrow the same book. So when he borrowed the same book, you know, date has to be changed, right? If it is 31st 8, so 31st 8, it is Oliver Twist. So B001, sorry, B1001, it is uh, Nias, so it's 003. So look there, this data repeated. So now your, your thought is wrong, right? So try, try understanding or try thinking in this way. So when you, when you decide a composite primary key, try checking whether the data is repeated or not, whether the combined data is repeated or not. If it is repeated, you can't say that it is composite key. So now you have to pick any different combination. So any others, any other answer? Date book ID and student date ID. Plus book ID, date, SID. Date ID. Sorry, date. Plus book ID plus SID. So all the fields, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, look here. Can, can I have date plus book ID? Is it is is it possible date plus book ID? No. Is it possible? Can I have date plus book ID? Yes. Yes. Look, uh, you you just mentioned date plus book ID plus SID may be okay, right? So even I can say that date plus book ID. There may be some confusion. Look here, date plus book ID. Look at the first data. Now I am I am taking date and book ID as composite primary key. So after after deciding that one, I have to check whether it is correct or wrong. Right, so now I will confirm like that. So look at the first data. This is my first data. 21A2014, B1001. Will it be repeated? Will this data be repeated again? No, sir. No. Huh? 
impossible yes, right so unless that same student uh, sorry unless that same book is borrowed on the same day it never be repeated you can argue that this book which means b1001 is borrowed on uh, on the on the 21st day 2014 morning maybe that person nias uh, i mean uh, handed handed over that book again to the library maybe at the evening another student borrows so if that happens you know 21 8 2014 b1001 repeated but you know in practical this is impossible right it is impossible to borrow the same book on the same day because if a book is borrowed it will be returned after few days so you can't say that it is it is returned uh, to the same day it is impossible so now i can say date plus book id but those who 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 argue that a book can be borrowed at the morning may be returned uh, in the evening and borrowed again so if you think so definitely date plus book id plus sid all these three things should be combined but uh, you don't be you don't need to be such complex things just understand that date plus book id is almost almost possible in exams uh, there may not be any questions uh, like this one right complex one right so it is okay date plus book id can be can be uh, composite primary key have you understood this date and this number cannot be repeated because that book has been borrowed on the particular day so definitely the same book cannot be borrowed on the same day right so it is the composite primary key any any doubts right so now tell me the foreign key now i am i am i am giving some time to you to practice the identification of all these keys every time when i do a question your ability your skill everything should be improved right that's why we are spending some time in identifying the keys so tell me a foreign key book id in uh, borrowing table yes book id in borrowing table this one this is one of the foreign key because this is the primary key book id is the primary key of book table it is the primary key of book table but not a primary key in uh, borrowing table so definitely it is uh, book id in borrowing table is uh, a foreign key is there any other foreign keys Yes, sir. Student ID yes. of the borrowing table. S I D in borrowing table. S I D in borrowing table. This one. This is also a foreign key because that same S I D is the primary key of student table. But in borrowing table, it is not the primary key because we already discussed date plus book ID. This is the primary key, composite primary key. So S I D is not the primary key there. It is the foreign key. okay right right before i i uh, see up to now now you all know about foreign key the definition for foreign key and you all know about how to identify the foreign key but up to now i didn't mention the reason for having foreign keys in the in the tables right i skipped that i ignore that because i thought that it it was in the time to explain so i define the term foreign key and also i i made you to identify the foreign keys now you have the ability but you don't know the reason for having foreign key right let me explain the reason before that let me show one more question right so let me show one more question to identify the keys after that i will i will tell you the reason for having foreign keys right so look at this uh, look at these two tables this is also one of the past paper question uh, there are two tables taxi table and rate table right taxi de details are in taxi tables and the charges for taxis are in uh, rate table again my questions are same give me 
two primary keys. Taxi name, driver name. I told you whenever it is a primary key, you must mention along with the table, right? Without table, the answer is wrong. Give me one, sorry, two primary keys. Taxi number in taxi table. Red taxi number in, in taxi table. Rate type in rate table. Rate type in rate table. Okay, look. Uh, so you mentioned that taxi number, this one, in taxi table. So look at the other data, then only we can decide. We have rate type, we have driver name, we have driver city. So for this car, right, for this model, this number is given FX0675. So you know this number never be repeated to another, another vehicle, another taxi. This is a taxi. This 3W is another taxi type. Van is another taxi. Everything is a taxi. But for every taxi, there is a number given. That number never be repeated. Yes, your answer is correct. Taxi number in taxi table. That is one of the primary key. Right. Look at the rate table. In rate table, that rate type is the primary key. Your answer is correct. Why the rate type is the primary key? Look here. If it is car, the rate is 40, 44 rupees. For car, the rate is 44 rupees. So now remember, this car never be repeated. You cannot ride the car again, right? You cannot ride the van again because for car, it's 44 rupees. You don't need to ride the car again. If you ride car, you have to ride 44 rupees again because for all the cars, the rate is 44 rupees. So don't think that the, uh, that the primary keys are always admission numbers or uh, number related terms, right? Taxi number or uh, receipt number or it can be anything, but it must be unique. Have you understood, right? Sometimes students may think that the primary keys are always related to a number like admission number or student number, teacher's number. No, right? Anything okay. So here the primary key is rate type. Right, because it cannot be repeated. Okay, right. So since since both tables have primary keys, you don't need to worry about composite primary keys, right? Because we we go to the or we have to go to the composite primary keys if no fields are eligible for primary key. Now, but here in taxi table, taxi number is is the eligible candidate for primary key. In rate table, rate type is the eligible candidate for primary key. So it is not, not needed for going composite primary key. Okay, now tell me the foreign key. Rate, rate type, type, of rate type in taxi table. Rate type of uh, in taxi table, yes. Rate type in taxi table, this is the one because the same rate type is the primary key in rate table, right? It is the primary key in rate table, but not as a primary key in uh, taxi table because in taxi table, primary key is taxi number. So according to the definition, it must be a primary key in one table, but not the primary key in another table. So here in rate table, rate type is the primary key, but in taxi table, it is not the primary key. So foreign keys, rate type in taxi table. Okay, so I have spent so many, I mean, so much time uh, in discussing, especially in identifying the keys. So now everyone should have the ability to identify these keys, right? Even, even though this table is small or complex, you must have the ability to identify all the three keys. Okay, right. Right. Now let's go back and uh, take the reason for having um, having uh, foreign key. Okay. Right. So look, listen carefully. I ha I have to take another important thing. Right. So these two tables were already taken. I already explained these two tables. Right. Hope you remember student table, payment table. In student table. 
uh, admission number, student names, date of birth. Three fields are there. In payment table, receipt number, amount, admission number, right? We have three fields, right? Look here. See, in the student table, you have admission number, student names, and date of birth. Here, receipt number, amount, admission number. But in the two tables, if you take all, uh, all these tables, which means both tables, there is a field which is available as a common field, right? There is a field which exists in both tables. What is it? Admission number. Look here, admission number is available in both table, in both uh, student table and payment table. But apart from this admission number, no other fields exist in both tables. Look there, receipt number exists only in payment table. Amount is, is available in payment table only. Similarly, student name exists in student table only. Date of birth also exists in student table only. But this is the one which exists in both student table and payment table, right? Okay. Now keep an eye on student, sorry, admission number. Keep an eye on admission number, right? So now listen, admission number is here in student table, admission number is in payment table. Tell me, right, listen to me, listen to me, tell me, which is the most appro appropriate table, which is the most appropriate table to have admission number? Is it student table or is it payment table? Student table. Payment table. Student table. All agree? Student table? Payment table. Yes, it, it is student table because, you know, fields are nothing. They are characters of some objects. Look at them. Admission. Look, look at this table. What is the table? Student table. So in student table, students' details are saved. So since student details are saved, the fields must be the characteristics of students. Fields are nothing. They are called attributes. Attributes means characteristics. So in student table, right, every field must be a character of student, characteristic of a student. So, you know, admission number is one of the characteristic of, of a student, one of the feature of a student. Name is one of the feature. Date of birth, maybe address, maybe parent's name. Everything is a feature. But now look here. This admission number, what is, the, what is the table there? It's a payment table. If it is payment table, the fields must be related to payment, right? They must be related to payment. See, look, there are receipt number, okay, that is payment because when the payment is made, receipt is issued. That receipt, ha that receipt has a number, that is okay, right? And also amount, amount is always, but Admission number nowhere near to payment. This is not the students can make the payment, but you can't say that they are related to payment, right? So this is not the payment characteristics, right? So here, actually, this cannot be added in the table. If you if you think practically, you need to have admission number, student name, date of birth, right? You need to have. You need to have admission number, student name, date of birth in student table. This is okay, right? This table is correct. But in payment table, these two must be there. Admission number cannot be. So this is this is uh, possible in practical. If you think practically, you would you would think like this. But the okay, assume. This admission number is not there. Listen to me, right? If you have uh, if you have any questions, ask me later. So now assume this admission number is not in the payment table. So student table has only three three fields: admission number, student name, date of birth. And payment table has only receipt number and amount. Okay. Right? So now look here. Now Uh, now, someone comes, right? Now, someone comes to me. Assume the, these tables are maintained by me. I maintain this table. 
So someone comes to me and asks to, to give the data of student uh, names, right? Student names. They want the student names along with the payment that they made, right? Their payment detail amount. Have you understood? I, I maintain two tables. In, in one table, I have student detail, admission number, name, uh, right? Date of birth or something. In another table, payment table, I have only receipt number and also I have the amount. But now we, we, we have a need, right? Someone comes and asks to give these two details, student names and amount looks like a table right like, like a table like this he or she wants such thing but the problem is i have both right i have student names and also i have a, a, a amount but the problem is student names are stored in student table amounts are saved in uh, what in payment table so now you have to retrieve this data from two tables and combine Right, you have to you have to take these two data. Student names are taken from student table. Amount should be taken from um, payment table, and then only you can join them. Look, if you want to take these two data from two tables, yes, you can take data from two different tables. There is no problem. But if you want to take data from two different tables, make sure both tables are connected. Make sure both tables are joined. In database terminology, we call that as both tables should be or should have a relationship. Relationship is nothing, it's a connection. So if both tables are connected or if you want two tables to be connected, there is one important rule, which is having a common field in both tables. I repeat it. If you want to connect two tables together, you should have a field in both tables. So this is the reason why we have added, right? We have added the admission number here, right? We have added the admission number here in this table because I, as I told you earlier, this is not the, not the place to have admission number. This is the place, but in addition to the admission number in student table, we have added in payment table because to connect these two tables, this, there is a field which, which must be available in both table. So that may be the reason why we have added this admission number in the other table. Now look here, both tables have same field, admission number available in both, both tables. Now these two tables can be connected. You don't need to worry about uh, how an admission, how only admission number is added here. You may think that uh, name can be added or maybe date of birth. I will explain such things in uh, another title called relationship. That would be our next title. Uh, in relationship, I will explain how we select the field to, to add another table. See here, both tables must be added, must be joined. I, I just mentioned to join two tables, there is a common field. So now we added admission number here. Okay, now we satisfy the rule. But some of you may think that receipt number can be added in the student table. So look here, admission number is not added. You may think that at receipt number can be added to student table. So now only receipt, now, now also receipt number is in payment table and also that is in student table. So you may think that it is okay, but don't be confused now. That would be explained in relationship for this moment. Understand this fact, to join two tables, there should be a common field available, right? So here, this is the original place for having admission number. But in addition to that, we have added that admission number in payment table because uh, to satisfy the rule, right? For joining two tables, there should be a common field. That is the reason why we have added uh, this admission number.
later i will explain how we can select the field to be added right that would be explained later you cannot select any field that you want right there there should be something to be to be considered i didn't take admission admission number randomly and added this i i checked some of the things carefully then only i have added that admission number right so we have to consider some things but later i will explain right in when it comes to relationship i can explain right so now tell me i i have asked these questions already too but i'm taking them again because uh, this may be the right time to recall them again so tell me what is the reason for having primary key why primary key in databases to identify each record uniquely yes to identify every record uniquely in a table why for uh, composite primary key in tables I have asked the same question on the other day. Why do you use composite primary key in table? Why composite primary key? To identify the records uniquely. Yes, same answer, right? To identify every record uniquely. Primary key does the same thing, right? Here also composite primary key also does the same thing. okay so don't don't be confused composite primary key also does the same thing when you don't have a primary key you go for composite primary key right okay now if you have understood my last example if you have watched it carefully tell me why foreign key used to connect to sorry connect to tables used to compare to tables You connect to tables. Yes, used to very good. Used to connect to tables. Look here. If you don't have this admission number, if you don't have this admission number, you cannot connect these two tables. Because student table has only admission number, names, date of birth. Payment table has only receipt number and amount. So if you don't have admission number here, you cannot say that the two two tables are connected. now two tables are connected it is because of this admission number have you understood this admission number is important for connecting two tables what is it what is this admission number what is it what is a special name this is a uh, foreign key we already discussed this is foreign key now realize it is the reason for having this connection right this admission number is reason for having this connection this admission number is called foreign key so don't uh take this idea look here foreign key is used to make connection between two tables this is a simple summary for connecting two tables you need a foreign key okay to identify every record in a table you need primary key to identify every record in a table when there is no primary key you need composite primary key okay right so we have spent enough time so hope these are enough right so let's switch to another title another another most important area but fortunately these were not asked in exams in the past right because they might feel that this is something advanced uh, for someone who studies in grade 10 but this is important if you understand this clearly then you know you can handle any things any questions which are asked in terms of databases right so this is called the relationships right i take the title relationship okay so now look here uh, now you can see the description too so in database the term relationship describes a connection between two tables listen to me the association association means here connection right uh, there is a relation so the connection between two tables is called a relationship right so in in, in the past questions were asked related to this one in mcq uh, so they may give four answers 
and ask you pick the ask you to pick the most correct answer so the, i i tell you some of the reasons sorry some of the options that they gave so uh, they may describe relationship as uh, association between two records there may be another option association between two fields there may be another option association between two databases there may be another option association between two tables this is the right answer association between two tables connection between two tables is called relationship have you understood assume you have two tables there is a connection between these two tables so that connection is described as relationship okay there can be three types of relationships or in other words two tables may have three different connections right as you, even in the in the previous slide i have shown you two tables so those two tables may have different kind of relationships so we have three different relationships the first one is called one to one relationship right one to one relationship i i will explain or explain about the relationship and how we can identify everything after listing uh, these three the second one is called one to many relationship right one to many relationship third one is called many to many relationship okay one to Uh, one to one, one to many, many to many. So, so here one to one can also be written like this: one to one. This is one to one relationship. Wait, I will explain about the features later. Ah, huh? then we have another one called one to many relationship. One to many relationship. On one side one. in the side m m means many we have another one called many to many so one side m in another side n not both ms in one side keep m in another another side keep n even you can start n here right n here and m there that is also correct both are same okay one to one one to many many to many these are the three different relationships uh, which uh, tables have right so we have to take them one by one so let me let me take the uh, okay before before i is taking one to one and one to many and many to many let me let me take one more one one question right so this would be better to take one more one more question right after that after clarifying that i will uh, show you uh, the type of relationships right so okay take a look at this table tables look at these two tables you have student table and you also have payment table okay right now tell me do these two tables right do these two tables have any relationship is there any relationship between these two tables is there any relationship between these two tables is there any relationship between these two tables Yes, sir. yes. Yes. Sir. So, how can you say that these two tables have relationships? Because how can you say that these two tables have relationships? Field. Because both table have same field. Yes, in both tables, right? In both tables, there is a common field available. Look here, admission number is there in student number, and also admission number is there in payment table. so since student table and payment table has admission number so we can say that the tables are related right both tables are related okay so now we know that two tables are related together so there is a relationship right so there is a relationship between these two tables it may be one to one it may be one to many it may be many to many right so we have to identify the type of relationship it may be one to one right we don't know so now we should we should identify the type of relationship in between these two tables right so can anyone okay okay you don't need to i mean tell you 
tell me i will i will explain about uh, how we can identify the uh, relationships right so okay so let's take the one to one first one to one relationship right so look at this table again two tables uh, i am i'm showing the same table student table this is student table right here payment table so as we discussed we have a relationship between these two table right we have a relationship between these two table because admission number is here in student table and also the admission number is in uh, payment table right so admission number is available in both table so there is a relationship between two table right so let's find out the type of relationship it's too simple right listen to me right so now you just mentioned that these two two tables are related right you just mentioned that these two tables are related you mentioned the tables are related because of this admission number okay because of the admission number you check the admission number so since that admission number is available in both tables you decided that the tables are related have you understood i am i am justifying uh the 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 answer i am justifying your answer right you just mentioned that the tables are related it is because of these two admission number okay now keep an eye on both admission numbers forget about the remaining uh, fields right you, you don't need to worry about the rest of the field keep an eye on this admission number right this admission number and this admission number because these two fields are the reasons for having relationship right so now look here uh okay it would be better right it would be better if i explain them in the board then only you can easily understand wait for a while right i will write them on the board then only you can understand so in student number we have admission number we have admission number we have student names right we have date of birth so these are the three fields available in student table and then in payment table right in payment table we have okay, take the payment table here we have uh, receipt number we have amount and also we have admission number right admission number right so let me fill the data so in the first table you have 1001 this is summon and there is a date of birth and then 1002 this is meena there is a date of birth 1004 Pereira, a date of birth. Thousand five. Vimal, date of birth. Okay. So in payment table you have receipt number. So there is a receipt number zero zero one. There is an amount. This is paid by thousand one. Another receipt number, right? Another amount. this is paid by 1002 1003 500 this is 1004 1000 so 004 500 this is 1005 right so i hope that uh, you all can read uh, Uh, read and uh, i mean uh, see the things right so in the first this is student table here payment table right so it is the primary key here receipt number is the primary key there 
uh, in in payment table admission number is the foreign key right admission number is the foreign key right look so yes these two tables are related right we have relationship uh, there is a relationship between two tables because this admission number is in both tables right there is no doubt okay so let me find out the type of relationship which these two tables have right okay so these two tables are related or they have the relationship it is because of the admission number so that's why i told you to keep an eye on admission number only forget about the other fields right you don't need to worry about student names you don't need to worry about date of birth keep an eye here also you don't need to worry about receipt number amount keep an eye on both admission number because of admission number these two tables are related right right so now check the admission number only okay right look at the first one right in the admission number listen to me i'm checking look at the first data 1001 in the in the first table i take the first data 1001 it's a data right a data how many similar data are available in the second table right how many similar data how many thousand one ones are available in the second data here i take a data in the first table i take a data right i take a data now i have to check the same data i have to search for the same data in the second table tell me how many similar data are found only one data so now i can say a data in the first table has only one similar data in the second table okay right don't stop at this moment go forward take the second data 1002 right i take a data there that data and check how many similar data are possible or are available in the second table again one data 1002 is there right that data has only one similar data here right so look at the third one 1004 right there is a data in student table how many similar data available in in payment table again one data look at the next one 1005 i get one data there that data uh, has only one similar data in payment table so now i check in this direction right i started from student and then move towards payment direction payment table this is the direction right i i went do through this direction i started from student student table and move towards payment table so in student table i take or i took a data that has only one similar data in payment table have you understood every data in student table only admission number right you don't need to worry about the others because every record is identified by admission number right so every record so every admission number has only one similar admission number in payment table so from student to payment direction in this direction we have one to one relationship one data that has only one data in another table this is called one to one but this is not enough to 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 have a conclusion so try checking on the opposite direction now we check in this direction right started from student table and moved towards the payment table now check in the opposite direction which means you have to start from the payment table and move towards admission number sorry towards student table so now this is the idea now take this data this is the first data here also you have to you have to keep an eye on admission number like the one which we discussed earlier so now look at my first data 1001 how many similar one similar data are available in student table here you have one data 1001 how many similar data available in the student table only one data right thousand ones look here it is only thousand one you you don't have two times thousand one 
here you have one data that has only one similar data in student table you have to check everything okay check another one thousand two here you have data how many times this thousand two entered in this in the student table again one check the other one thousand four here we have that one right this data how many similar data available in student table again one thousand five here i get a data i take a data how many thousand fives are there in student table get one so now i have another i mean another uh, conclusion a data in payment table right a data in payment table has only one similar data in student table have you understood earlier we checked in in a direction from student to payment and found one to one relationship one to one means one data in student table has one similar data in payment table that is not enough to to make the conclusion that's why now we are taking the opposite so if it is opposite direction you have to check from payment table to student table so how to check the same way so now take a data in payment table and see how many times that the data is entered or is available in student table so here every data is available in payment table sorry in student table once so since we have one to one relationship in both directions the conclusion is these two tables have one to one relationship right a data in student table has only one similar data in payment table a data in payment table has only one similar data in student table this is one to one i know that this is not enough for understanding the whole call whole, whole concept right you can wait uh, once I, i i take other other examples right this but try to get an idea right the base must be laid now right you have to get a get a foundation right so okay before i wind up let me show one example right so assume there is another another record here 1005 right 1005 700 right 1002 005 700 1002 sorry yes 1002 now can we say that these two tables have one to one relationship no no uh, is it correct now can i say that these two tables have one to one relationship no no why what is the reason now look look there now no. it violates our our rules look at the first no. data. listen to me huh? look at the first data 1001 and check in the direction huh? in this direction 1001 no. how many times that 1001 is entered only once okay that is correct but you have to check the other data maybe one data right a data may be ex, may be available one that is okay but look at the 1002 here 1002 i have a data there right one data see how many 1002s are there in the payment table 1002 entered twice so a data in student table right one data in student table has two similar data two similar data in payment table so here it has two similar data which means many data so now you can't say that it is one to one relationship so if it is one to one should be only one so if there is another record like 1002 it is no more or no longer one to one okay so it may be okay but uh uh this is uh, this is just an introduction but uh, try understanding a concept right so now you must understand the relationship and you must understand uh, you must understand uh, how the tables are connected together and try to understand this idea one to one right if it is one to one you have to check the common field and check in both directions so in both directions it must be one to one right so try practicing so it would be better if i to if i take one or two examples then only it would be very simple right so this is not hard any questions asked any doubts no right okay so it's it's 
uh, enough uh, try spending some time in in working and in identifying the keys we will discuss uh, with uh, some other examples and other uh, relationships later right so thank you